Well, we have a longtime friend with us this morning. I knew Boyd Bailey when he was just Boyd Bailey. <laughs> and now he's the author of Wisdom Hunter. And he's speaking around the country, speaking to a lot of folks, writing books on leadership, writing devotionals. So he's going to speak with us this morning about good leaders or good grievers. All right. Welcome up, Boyd. Good morning. Good morning. Aren't you so grateful that that man is healthy as a horse? Can we give God the glory for that? So how many of your grandparents? Okay, that's cool. So my new statement about grandparenting is there are a lot of things in life that are overrated, but being a grandparent is not one of them. Would you agree with that? Isn't it cool? So life is full of the joy of new life, like grandbabies, but also the other track. It's a dual track, right? A sorrow is the other track. There's a tear in every heart. Every man here has had a sad day. In fact, <clears throat> when was the saddest day of your life? Was it a divorce? Was it death? Was it the uh, loss of a a child, a prodigal child, or was it a medical condition that was life-altering that's become permanent? When was the saddest day of your life, and how did you manage that? Did you do, did you do what's tempting for me, and that is just be self-reliant and buck up and just kind of push through because I'm the man, I'm the breadwinner, I got I to gotta keep my game face on, or denial, you know, denial can be our best friend, I'll forget about this, it'll go away. Or have you really, truly learned to grieve and to process Sorrow, but the reason I ask this, I've got some fresh bread this morning. Is that okay? I've got some fresh bread. The saddest day of my life was October 5th when I stood among a group of people. My friend Bill was there to love on me over the death of my mama. Here's what I'm learning about a mama's love. A mama's love cannot be replaced. My mom was a single mom, so she had a double portion of love, and it hit me right in the face, the influence that she had in my life. It was just overwhelming. <clears throat> it was hard, and, 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 and I'm still grieving and working through it, but I said, Lord, I'm not a good griever. I'm too self-reliant. I'm too much like a man. Would you please help me to grieve well, because I want to be better because of this sorrow in my life. You see, sorrow can either shrivel up our soul or sorrow can stretch our soul. I said, Lord, stretch my soul so I can be more empathetic. I can be more compassionate. I can be more loving. I can be more grace-filled versus becoming a person of discomfort and a person that's uh, hardened because of life's sorrows. Men, men. We serve a man of sorrows who is acquainted with grief. We have a sympathizing Savior who can meet us with that tear that's in every heart. What's the saddest day of your life? Was it a death? Was it a divorce? Was it a loss of a career, a job change? Was it a medical issue that altered your life? forever? And how have you processed that sorrow? Honestly, honestly, have you truly grieved and mourned over that sorrow? Have you allowed the sorrow to stretch your soul to give you more capacity for love and empathy? Or has it shriveled your soul? And you may be smiling on the outside, but really on the inside, you're a man of discomfort and uncertainty and maybe even anger and and bitterness. So here's the verse. I, I, I can't get this verse out of my head. It's a promise. Don't you love promises in the word? Here's the gift of sorrow. Here's the, here's the, grift, here's the gift of mourning and grieving if we do it as Jesus instructed us. Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. And so I said the opposite in my head. Boyd, if you don't mourn, you will live in discomfort. 
And so what does it mean to process that sorrow and that grief? Well, I can tell you one thing I'm learning. It requires being with people. Comfort is related to proximity. I love the phone calls. I love the text. I, I, I love the emails. But when my brother and friend was there with me, God uses that body of Christ and that proximity. Good night. You guys are around the tables every week. What a, what a cool, powerful resource that you have, having the proximity of other brothers around you to comfort and to help you process the hurting uh, and, the, and the sorrow. So during this time, the Wednesday night before her service, her service was on Friday, I woke up in the middle of the night and I wrote for two hours a tribute. It started out being like a rap, but I'm not a rapper. <laughs> you can tell, right? I'm not a rapper and it's not really a poem, but it's a tribute to my mama. And don't be afraid, it's only six minutes and 47 seconds when I read this. But I want to read you this tribute to my mama because it allowed me to process my pain and my sorrow in a way that I don't think I could have if I hadn't have written this out and recounted her investment and her influence in my life. And after I read this tribute, I want to wrap us up with Jesus. Is that okay? Is that a good process? I called it... I called it Mama Raised Me. Mama raised me to clean my plate. That's how Mama raised me. Mama raised me to gargle with Listerine, floss, brush my teeth, and kiss girls to do the same. That's how, <clears throat> that's how my mama raised me. My mama raised me to wash my hands before dinner, which was lunch, and before supper, which was dinner. You get that? In Alabama, that's how it works, Okay. My mama raised me to feed the animals and not have any. That's how mama, that's how mama raised me. My mama raised me to say, yes, ma'am, no, ma'am, thank you, ma'am, please. That's how mama raised me. Now, listen closely on this next one, you city, city guys. My mama raised me to shoot a squirrel with a 22, a quail with a 410, a rabbit with a 14, 16 gauge, a dove with a 12 gauge, and a deer with a 30 30. That's how my mama raised me. And if you get that mixed up, you don't have any meat on the bones. My mama raised me to walk barefooted, carry a cane pole, dig up red worms, wet a hook, catch a fish, scale them, gut them, fry them up, and eat them. That's how my mama raised me. My mama raised me to gig bullfrogs at night with a spotlight, fry up their legs, and watch them hop around in the pan. That's how my mama, <clears throat> that's how she raised me. My mama raised me to catch fireflies, display them in a quart mason jar, and nail holes in the tin lid with the eight penny nail and watch them glow. That's how mama raised me. My mama raised me to skip rocks on a small pond and big and dream big dreams. That's how my mama raised me. Now here's the food, guys. Men love this part, right? Here's the food. My mama raised me to eat homemade buttermilk biscuits with real butter, sorghum syrup, and sweet milk. Homemade cornbread cooked in a cast iron black skillet. Fried potatoes covered with ketchup. Fried okra, fried chicken, fried livers and onions, black eyed peas, filled peas, crowder peas, English peas, pinto beans, green beans, baked beans, and white beans. That's how my mama, <clears throat> that's how she raised me. My mama raised me to pick blackberries, blueberries, and plums, to bust open a yellow meat watermelon in the field, suck up the juice, spit out the slippery black sleeves, and to kill snakes in the creek with a hoe. In fact, she came down in the creek one day with a hoe and killed a water moccasin. <clears throat> That's how mama raised me. My mama raised me to cut our Christmas tree on her grandmother's land, somehow tie it on the back and the top of our yellow Volkswagen, and display it proudly in our home like it was unveiled at the Rockefeller Center in New York City. That's how mama raised me. My mama raised me to work hard, tell the truth, and to be kind to everyone. That's how she raised me. My mama raised me to be polite, to be grateful, and to be compassionate. That's how mama raised me. <clears throat> my mama raised me to look people in the eye, to greet them with a hello, howdy, good morning, good afternoon, or how are you doing? 
that's how mama raised me. Mama raised me to say a blessing before a meal, enjoy my food, or at least act like I did, and take my dishes to the sink and wash them. <clears throat> that's how she raised me. My mama raised me to sweep and mop the floor, vacuum the carpet, make my bed, wash my clothes, rake the leaves, mow the grass, and pick up pecans and shell them. That's how she raised me. And you remember when you get a, a scrape or a cut on your leg? You remember that? <clears throat> My mama raised me to dab alcohol methylate and mercurochrome on a cut. Whew, man, that was tough. That's how she raised me. My mama raised me to believe castor oil and duct tape solved most ailments and fixed broken things. Amen? That's how mama raised me. Mama raised me to play sports, play my best, play fair, play for fun, play when I was hurt, play to help my teammates, and play to win. That's how she raised me. My mama raised me to read, be curious, ask questions, go to college, go to graduate school, and never stop learning. That's how my mama raised me. My mama raised me to travel, learn from other cultures, and to serve people. That's how she raised me. My mama raised me to love all individuals made in God's image, all races, all religions, all political persuasions. That's how my mama raised me. Can I read that one one more time? My mama raised me to love all people as individuals made in God's image, all races, all religions, and all political persuasions. That's how she raised me. My mama raised me to drive a stick shift, change the oil, wash the outside, and vacuum out the inside. That's how mama raised me. She raised me to believe sweet, excuse me, she, believed me, she raised me to believe sweat is good and dead is bad. That's how mama raised me. She, my mama raised me to cry and be willing to die for someone I love. That's how mama raised me. My mama raised me to believe comfort relates to proximity. So when I found her daddy dead as a 12-year-old boy, she let me sleep on the floor next to her bed for a solid week because I was so fearful and traumatized from that death because comfort relates to proximity. That's how mama raised me. My mama raised me to date girls from the South. That's how she raised me. She raised me to love the Lord and to marry someone who loved the Lord more than me. That's how mama raised me. My mama raised me to read the Bible and to do what it says. That's how mama raised me. My mama raised me to be my very best, to be the very best Christian, to be the best coworker, to be the best friend, the best husband, the best granddad, the best father-in-law, the best son-in-law, the best nephew, the best brother, cousin, and grandson, and to be the best son. That's how she raised me. You done good, mama. <clears throat> you done good. Rest, and you don't have to worry anymore. You don't have to mama anymore. You can, you can focus on your gardening. You done good. <clears throat> so I want to leave you with this thought. And by the way, thank you for letting me grieve this morning and for comforting me with those loving eyes. Thank you for that. But you remember when Jesus' friend Lazarus died? You know this story. But here's what's happened in my heart. You know how most of the time truth has to intersect with experience before it truly becomes understanding in our heart? So I see Jesus different now after losing my mama. And so his friend Lazarus died, and he delayed. You remember the story. He delayed. He had a bigger plan. And he starts walking over to Bethany, and Martha, to me, Martha's like a female Peter. She's impetuous. She's, she's, she, she fires before she aims. Martha runs out. Mary stays at the home morning with the Jews that had come in to comfort them and console them. Martha runs out, and it's facts, logic, and reason for Martha. She says, oh, Jesus, if you'd been here, he would have been healed, and he wouldn't have died. And Jesus is like, oh, Martha, you know he's going to live again. I'm the resurrection and life, and he that believes in me will not Die, though he dies, he will live. Do you believe this? So Jesus approached her with truth because that was her 
temperament. That was where she was, facts, logic, and reason. But Mary, we know Mary, right, sitting at the feet of Jesus. She's back at the house mourning, grieving. And how does Jesus approach her? Well, Sister Martha goes and gets her and brings her out, and it says, the Scripture says she fell at the feet of Jesus to worship. And he, she stood up, and they had a group hug, and they wept. They cried because our Savior is a man of sorrows who's acquainted with grief. So here's our Savior, and he's comforting because we, he knows that those who mourn and those who grieve well shall be comforted. And here's what I have to be careful with. I'm quick to share the truth when the Holy Spirit is saying, Boyd, lead with comfort. Lead with comfort. So that person knows you're trying to be there with them. You're trying to understand. And then when it's appropriate, when I allow you and I lead you, share the truth. So I'll leave this with you. When was the saddest day of your life? Was it a death? Was it a divorce? Was it a career change, a life-altering medical issue? And have you truly grieved and mourned over that loss? Maybe there's something right now in your heart, and you need comfort. And we have a Savior who's a man of sorrows, who's acquainted with grief, and we have the body of Christ <laughs> around the tables. Don't you know the devil is not happy with this scene here? We don't finish well by ourselves, do we? We don't finish well alone. We finish well together. We don't grieve and mourn alone. We grieve and mourn and process, process sorrow together. Yes, I'm grateful. Listen, I'm, I'm one of those positive human beings. I'm glad we have joy that we can celebrate, but there's also sorrow to be mourned. And if we miss that, we're not truly being comforted and we're living in discomfort. And so around the tables this morning, we have an opportunity to process some of these ideas, and I want to pray for you, and then we'll take a few minutes and have the time around the table. Heavenly Father, um, thank you that we serve a risen Savior who is a man of sorrows. Thank you, Jesus, that you're acquainted with our grief. And Lord, I know there's a tear in every heart here this morning. Every man's been touched by sorrow, and I pray for them that they can be comforted by the Holy Spirit this morning, and also they can be comforted by, by their friends who are around the tables with them. Give us the courage, Lord, to be honest about the hurt and the pain in our heart. Give us humility, Lord, to receive comfort, and we love you, and thank you that uh, you love us unconditionally. And we praise you in the mighty name of Jesus. And I love these men, Lord. Thank you for them. Amen. Gentlemen, <clears throat> hey, don't you love Fridays? It's hard to mess up a Friday, but it can be done. So, uh, so how was it around the table? Any, any uh, highlights? Somebody, two or three of you would like to share? <laughs> well, that's great. It's good to appreciate our moms, isn't it?
<clears throat> How many of your moms are still alive? That's great. Call her. I have four voicemails I listened to last week and just wept. <clears throat> now, son, it's raining over here, and I just saw on the Weather Channel it's coming your way. <clears throat> and then it would be, and I'm not feeling well. I think I'm going to need to go to the doctor. Anyway, okay, um, what else? <clears throat> Wow, that's a great thought. Did y'all hear that up there? That's a great thought. Thank you for that. <clears throat> One more. So, uh, it resonated at our table a lot. The understanding needs to be shared. Uh, really yeah, truth intersecting experience. Yep. Great. That's a great point. Comfort cannot be forced. It's good. Should we as spiritual leaders of our household discuss the fact that our bodies are going to die and that we have that open discussion with our kids? And say, hey, I want you to groom, grieve, and mourn, but at the end, I want you to celebrate where I'm at. Because that's the reality. Yeah, did y'all hear that? Yeah, to have that conversation. In fact, Mark's going to have a tailgate party, I think, at his funeral. So <laughs> we're, all, uh, we're, all, we're all coming, yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's a little morbid, but it's, it's helpful, right? Yeah, okay. All right. Hey, guys, um, this publisher asked me a couple years ago to write a book on leadership, and I'm like, do we really need another book on leadership? To me, we have enough books on leadership to choke a horse, but the more I talked to them about it, they said, no, we want you to write a book on leadership out of relationship, out of loving people. And so I, I looked at the life of Jesus, and I, and I wrote about 11 character traits uh, in his life. And uh, the, 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 the foundational first three chapters are humility, love, and accountability. So this might be helpful if you're looking for something kind of different as you approach leadership. Uh, hopefully this will be encouraging. In fact, we have the Ron Dunn special today, uh, buy one, get one free. So for 10 bucks, you can actually pick up two of these if you'd like. Uh, and then the Walt Hendrickson book is out there too. Walt's a lot more wiser than I am, so his is 20 bucks, I think. So. <laughs> now, what happens now? Do we pray or what happens? Or we just say, get out of here? Would you, would you close us in prayer? All right, guys, let's pray. Uh, Father God, we just come before you right now, and I thank you for the message uh, today. I uh, pray for everyone in this room. Pray for your blessings upon us all, uh, and you lift us and, and uh, give us two, one, two, three things that we can go home and uh, share with our families and uh, just bring light to everyone that we see today. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. One Thing for Men meets at Cabernet Steakhouse in Alpharetta, Georgia on Friday mornings from 7 to 8 a.m. If you live in the Atlanta area, or visit the area on Friday, we would love to have you join us in person. And if you have been blessed by this message, please consider supporting One Thing for Men online.